uh, works for me. Thank you, Chairman. Um, Mr. Farah, uh, thank you for that uh, reply, and uh, uh, thank you also for mentioning the AI uh, roadmap that uh, Senators uh, Rounds, myself, Heinrich, and, and Schumer released last week. In that bipartisan roadmap, we encourage committees to continue their work on developing a federal framework for testing and deployment of autonomous vehicles, and we highlight that it's particularly critical as our strategic competitors, most notably the Chinese Communist Party, uh, continue to race ahead and attempt to shape the vision uh, of this technology. Just yesterday, in fact, the UK, um, their AV Act became law, and they'll have driverless cars on their roads within two years. Uh, says current reporting. So, Mr. Farrow, where does the U.S. stand in the global AV competition, to your mind? And what are other countries doing differently in support of innovation and deployment? Senator, thank you very much for the, for the question. The way I think about this is that over the course of the last dozen or so years, you've had a, a, an incredible American success story in terms of bringing autonomous driving to where it is. But the reality is that this has gone noticed by many other countries around the world that also want to have safer roads, they want to have more accessibility, they want to have supply chain benefits. And so they are racing to, to keep up and certainly China is, is one of those countries. And while our country right now, we, we are firmly in the lead, we have the best companies in the world, we have the deepest capital markets, we're ahead in technological innovation, we are struggling when it comes to public policy. We, we need to have a federal framework put in place that supports the development of autonomous vehicles. We need to have action on legislation such as AV Start. We need to have action on rules at the Department of Transportation. The, the federal government is, is behind where a lot of the states are, where they have really taken a lot of action in recent years. Well, it's incumbent upon us uh, to, to list, listen to these entreaties and um, and to act after you know duly studying the facts and consulting with all stakeholders. And we have been involved in such consultation uh, and preparing for action for some period of time. So it does seem like it's an, if the UK is prepared to go ahead, uh, it, it seems like we ought to be, uh, especially seeing as we're leading in uh, innovating in many of these technology areas. Is, is that consistent with your assessment of where the technology is? Senator, yeah, we, we absolutely have the best companies in, in, the, in the world here, but we need to make sure we have a policy framework that can support those companies going forward. Um, Mr. Mr. Farah, to, to move on to uh, another important topic that many of you touched on in uh, your opening remarks, and I'll, and I'll get to many of you. Um, nearly 41,000 people died on our roads last year. It's just a massive, massive number, and, and I was trying to contextualize this number because uh, I believe this goes underreported, at least as compared to a lot of other sort of uh, disasters that afflict families and, and communities. The CDC reports that uh, every year the number of U.S. murders involving a firearm, it's half that number. It's half that number. So I actually think it was, it was completely accurate when Secretary Buttigieg recently said, human drivers aren't just problematic, they're murderous. Again, he was talking about uh, the opportunity cost for not adopting uh, uh, the latest technologies. Uh, they're murderous and, and we've been bathed in this level of carnage all our lives. He, he put it more pointedly, more graphically than I think I would, but nonetheless, can you tell us Mr. Farah, how AVs will help decrease the number of fatalities and share any projections on, on uh, how significantly it will decrease by uh, your estimates. Senator, I appreciate the question. I, I think the reality is that we've been desensitized to this as a, as a country, and it's not acceptable. It's going to take committee hearings like this. It's going to take action at a federal and a state level to be able to, to address this. For, for our part in, in the industry, the development of autonomous vehicles, we believe, is going to be one of the, the suite of solutions that, that is out there. The reality is that human behavior is what's driving a lot of the deaths and, and other types of, of crashes that, that we are seeing. And autonomous vehicles don't suffer from a lot of those human frailties. They don't text while drive, they don't drive in pair, they don't drive distracted, and we don't have to accept any longer all of these types of, of human conditions that are there. And so we will continue to see autonomous vehicles roll out deliberately in American communities. That is, a, is great news, and our expectation is that correspondingly we'll see a reduction in, in crashes. And that's something, again, we need federal partners on. 
we, we, we certainly have a, we, we've got to lay a predicate of trust in order to enable that to happen. I, I absolutely understand that. I'm going to recognize Senator Klobuchar, and, and uh, we'll get back to our other uh, uh, witnesses. Thank you very much. 